Welcome back to the charismatic voice. B-Y-O-B to me means that there's a party somewhere and you're supposed to bring your own beer. I'm a particular fan of Kilt Lifter in case you were wondering. But B-Y-O-B to system of a town means bring your own bombs. And that subtitle instantly drew my attention. So we're going to dive in. Let's get to it. Oh my gosh. Uh, this, I think, has the most incredibly striking beginning of a System of a Down song I've ever heard. I really like System of a Down. I've been really getting into them. This is intense. Holy crap, the extended vocalization, the, the technique that is behind some of these harsh vocals is also really intense. And then the shift in the the feel of the tempo at one point, uh, even the style that Serge was singing in at another point. Oh my gosh. Like the video too. Whoa. Okay. Back to the beginning. There's going to be a lot of unpacking to do. Like, such an intense tempo to start at in the first place. Wow. It's going to be hard to break down. Like There's so much that is happening back to back. I think it's interesting how in that very first part, it feels intense with just a little bit of instrumentation. And then you really get hit by the sound and very disjunct. Uh, it feels like there's some time signature shifting that's happening in there. But then also Darren's vocalizations are just crazy. This buy, die idea. Wow. Wow. I guess buy a bomb and die from it? Is that where, I think that's where we're going. Okay. Definitely brainwash. Yo. That sound, Yo. definitely felt like, uh, felt like a low of a harsh vocal, maybe more false fold, but you can't do fries that are left. That sound from Darren is freakish. Right? It sounds almost like a, a dying pig. <laughs> it's so intense to, before we even have any clean singing whatsoever, have this sound come in and it feels like, like nails on a chalkboard in a lot of ways. I know that to make that sound, there has to be a ton of constriction in the upper vocal tract. And it's just, it's very intense and how the sound is made, period. So it makes sense that it would create this really intense emotion as a response. Oh my gosh. So in Serge's delivery here, we have a lot of really ruled R's. There's a there's something about its diction that feels kind of formal and snooty in some ways. And even in the way he pops off of the melody makes it more like a holler that isn't particularly pitched or particularly sung. 
it, it feels almost out of place right after Darren's scream. It's so, um, the two are just so conflicting, which is why I think there's so many emotions that happen immediately, not to mention all of the emotions associated with the instrumentation that's happening and the visualizations. Okay, back one more time. So interesting how much of this is sung versus not sung, meaning clean vocals with a melody versus not clean vocals. We're hearing tons of things in here that have like a bit of pitch to them that are just more like elongated speaking or oration, but not really truly holding one pitch for a span of time. It's uh, It's got so much expression in the delivery there. And it's also got so much, what's the word? It's almost bringing irony or make, making fun of these words as well. There's like so many layers to the expression that is happening. Okay, I'm gonna go back one more time and then we'll keep going forwards because I feel like I could sit and analyze the, just this section for an hour. Right? The contrast in this is brilliant. You, I, I understand so well why it's BYOB. It makes sense. There's this idea of this party and sort of like a brainwashing element, maybe a celebration element. And then the terror of bombs, of, of war, of, of death that's happening on the other side. And uh, this idea of, I guess, a, a, the positive spin on war or the celebration that I've, I guess is sometimes apparent. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> like I said before, before we even got to this section, there's a lot to unpack in this song. <sighs> Back to this section. From the tablecloth. Just contrasting this with the first part, it's amazing how much more simple this part is. Musically, uh, when the singing's done here, it's fairly straightforward. We have an octave, a parallel octave, as far as the notes that are being sung. So not any uh, complex harmonies going on. It's just kind of chill in the tone. Uh, and then we've got a much more <laughs> chill tempo as well. And as far as any sort of fill that's happening from instruments, it's just much more simple. Serge feels like he's mocking something with those la la. Okay, sorry. Just back to this section. Lies from the 
the tabletop! Wow! Oh my gosh, okay, so we kind of went back to that first feeling of the very intense uh, tempo. It's got a march feel to this one, two, one, two, one, two, so a very quick march. Uh, additionally, even the way that the voices are moving, they're often moving here sort of in stepwise motion next to each other. So it reinforces that march idea. Um, I also, I just have to say Serge and Darren together, they have so much uh, similar resonance in their voices. Uh, there's, uh, oh, it's like a, a pleading, but it's a desperation in their sounds. Um, it really hits me. I, their sounds together are incredible. Their sounds one-on-one -on -one are also, or on their own, are incredible. It's just really, really fascinating to hear them in all the settings. I've absolutely loved getting to dive into their voices. Go back one more time. Listen to this, how marching it sounds. It's, wow. <laughs> oh, perfect. This is like Shavo singing in this too, possibly. Yeah, this is a really good example too of hearing how Serge will come in and out of a sound that is a clean vocal sound, meaning he's creating a pitch right here with nothing else on top of it. And then when he went up, was it freedom? He, he yelled out a sound that was much higher and there was a lot more disturbance in the sound. That's definitely something that's happening above the vocal fold level. That's going to be uh, essentially like a sub glottal or sorry, super glottal structure that will be diving in, meaning that's above the glottis. The glottis is that space between your vocal folds. So if you're above that, and you do something to disturb the sound up there, that means you're not gonna be hurting your two vocal folds with that sound. Let's go back just a little bit again. I love the way he expresses lies there. Oh my gosh, dancing in the desert, blowing up the sunshine. Wow, the way that they sing those lyrics as if it was all smooth and okay. This, this song, <laughs> it was like such a gut punch. Oh my gosh. Dancing in the desert, blowing up the sunshine. All right, there's something about this now that just makes me kind of sick to my stomach. I think that that's what they wanted to actually make us feel like. Uh, wow. What a powerful, powerful message and expression of it. What a way to, what a way to make a person just feel like you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so progressive and crazy. And the thing that blows my mind is I understand that they have mainstream popularity 
and yet they're so progressive in their music and it just it's going back and forth and back and forth in these crazy different areas of a journey essentially that's amazing to be able to take that and make it mainstream wow Darren's screaming here to me it definitely sounds like it's back in that fry scream area again fry screaming is not the same thing as vocal fry there's right vocal fry would be done much 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 lower and with very little breath support um the fry scream the way it's up there lots and lots of constriction there and it sounds terrifying I'd even read this really cool research at one point that talked about how uh, harsh or extreme vocals have this uh, effect on the spine that it looks like people stabilize their spines to help create them. Um, there might be certain kinds, you know, I, we need to go a lot further with harsh vocal research. It, we barely skimmed the surface. You know, it's like we've seen what happens in certain situations. We can't really apply it hugely, widely, with any specificity at this point. But that being said, uh, I think the idea of a spine stabilization with this kind of sound makes sense because it has so much aggression in it. And it was theorized that the same way that animals might growl in preparation for some sort of attack, uh, a harsh vocal might have that same growl element that requires uh, preparation in the body for some sort of attack. And you can you can really hear the aggression in his sound here. Let's go back a little bit. Oh my gosh. Blast off in party time and we don't live in a fascist nation. Blast off in party time and oh. where the fuck are you? Can I get my gut punched anymore? Like this is, this is sorry, this is jaw dropping, and whoa. Um, why don't president? What's the word? Why don't presidents fight the war? Yeah, why don't presidents fight the war? Why do they always send the poor? Man, like, I guess that's strangely true. And I think back, like, oh, well, Washington fought, but how recently have we had a president there? I guess, you know, that has happened a while ago, where we'll have a president who was fighting before and then came in. But, man, I get the point. I get the point. And that's their point. That's disturbing. Why do you always send the poor? Why do you always send the poor? I just gotta say, sometimes you shouldn't sing to make a pretty sound. And this is definitely one of those times when this should be an ugly, ugly kind of sound. The way they're leaning into nasality and harshness in the vocals, it's just, it is a perfect expression for what they're singing about. Right there. I feel like I feel like that section and, and the way they have people within it is somehow about conscription. Is that your interpretation too? I'm curious to hear what your interpretations are of this. Uh, I feel like it doesn't have as many widespread interpretations as some dog songs do, but I feel like they're making specific callouts to moments um, in our history. <laughs> Everybody's 
Ah, it looks like brainwashing. Dancing in the desert, blowing up the sun. Where the fuck are you? Where the fuck are you? Why don't presents fight the war? Why do we always send the war? Why don't presents fight the war? Why do we always send the war? It's amazing how they made that quick switch this time. The way it just is bursting into the sound. And <laughs> the... This contrast between the chill and the totally not chill is, uh, it's brilliant. This is a brilliant song. Holy crap. Dancing in the desert, blowing up the sun. Where the fuck are you? Where the fuck are you? Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm going to go back just a little bit. Notice the way that the shift of the overall pitch center of the harsh vocals was raising at the end. But the way that people just end up with these masks on, it feels like, like everybody's getting put a mask over their eyes and not able to see the truth of something. The song had a strange upbeatness to it, chill. If I were to listen to just the music and have that sort of smooth feeling sometimes, that wall of energy at other times, I might have taken away an entirely different impression than when I look at the lyrics with that music. System of Down has achieved something extraordinary here because instead of feeling kind of crazy and fun, I feel really somber and thoughtful. I think it's important to pay attention to what they've done. This is really, really impressive. If you'd like to see some more analysis of their music, you can check out this playlist over here. And may you fall more in love with music every day.